Hello, my fellow freedom builders, and welcome back to the channel. As you know, I like to make videos where I kind of ask some questions. You ask me because I get, kind of get the same questions all the time. And uh, why not make some videos where I try to answer all of it? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to answer some questions. And it is questions on how I find my swing trading candidates in TradingView. Because and many of you uh, write me when I make a video say, saying that this stock could blow up or this is a good value stock or something like that. And you ask me, why did you just pick that one? Why not the 1000 other stocks? So today I'm going to show you kind of something of the engine behind how I find my swing trading, my short term swing trading candidates. And I am going to use TradingView. And as you know, uh, that is one of the few uh, tools that I actually recommend where I have an affiliate deal. So there is a link below if you want to try out TradingView for yourself. They have a fantastic free version and many of the things I show you today can actually be done with that version. But if you want to have the, the paid version and you use my link, I'm making a, a, a few dollars on that. I also show you something about Stokopedia today and there's also a link to that below with a, I think it is a 25% discount. So that said, let's get straight to it. Remember when I start here that you just hit the subscribe and the like button and all that just beneath the video. All right. Now we're in TradingView and as you know, if you've seen my video, it is one of my absolute favorite tools. And uh, what I'm going to show you today, let's just take it a bit up here. What I'm going to show you is the stock screener and I've shown you that sometimes before it is in a uh, in a tab below here and uh, the stock screener as you can see when you press that button you get some sort of a little window opening up here and what I'm going to show you is the filters because what I use here for my swing trading candidates is I have some uh, quite simple filters actually there's not really any magic in this but let me just show you what I look for and then you can adjust it any way you like. First of all, I am looking for stocks for my swing trading candidates that have a market capitalization between 200 million and $2 billion. So it is small cap, it is below $2 billion. Um, but I also want, and we can just go, scroll down here, that if you take the volume, meaning the, the number of stocks uh, traded at a single day times the price, I do like to see an average above uh, $500,000, that is volume times price. So I do like to see some sort of volume in, in dollars so I know that I can actually get some stocks bought and sold. So that is something about the size. Uh, I just uh, choose common stocks. Then I have set this three month performance and you can find all of this in, in the screener. I have set that to be above five and that is above five percent meaning that i do like a stock that has not gone down over the last three months uh, maybe a bit sideways maybe some upwards but above five percent and we can see that all the stocks that comes uh, with the screener here where, when i screen the, this in a second we can see that they are all going up a, a bit then I have set a change from open above zero. And that is simply because I do want uh, a stocks where the last candle has been a bullish candle. And when you do this during the day, maybe that is only in the paid version. I'm not 100% certain about that. But if you screen during the day, you also get the ones that in the current trading day uh, has a, a positive result. The buyers are coming in, so there's a green candle. Now, uh, let's just skip these two for now and uh, see that I am looking at a relative strength index, the RSI on 14 days to be above 50, meaning it is in an uptrend. And I have this simple uh, screening here saying I want the simple moving average uh, 20 days to be above the simple moving average of 50 day. And I want the 50 day to be above the 200 day. So I am in different ways here with the RSI, with the three month performance, with the simple moving averages here. I am trying to get some decent candidates that are showing some sort of uptrend. Now, if I just pick these, I end up with, uh, you can see here the number of matches. If I hadn't put in a couple of fundamental factors, I would end up with something like 200 stocks. And that can be fine enough. 
um, when you're just looking for something for a quick swing trade. Uh, but if we want to swing trade some stocks where we are saying, I'm not only just going to hold it three or five days, but I might actually, if the swing goes right, if I pick it at the exact right time, I might want to be in the stock for a month or three months or a year. Well, sometimes I have a swing trade that develops into a long-term trade because the trend just keeps going. And that is, of course, nice. I just stay in it. I never work with targets saying I want two to one or five to one. I simply go with the trend. But if you want some stocks where there is some potential, or at least it is not a complete uh, death trap to walk into, I have tried just to put in a couple of normal fundamental indicators. For instance, the debt to equity ratio here, I've set that to be below 0.5, meaning that the total debt should not be more than half the entire equity of the company. So you can put that a bit higher, you can set that to one if you don't care too much about it, but don't want two leveraged companies. But these uh, this one at 0.5 means that it is a fairly safe company. They are not over leveraged. But we can see if we put this at, let's say, 0.8, you can see right away we get some more uh, stocks here. Before we had uh, 18 matches, now we have 28. So uh, we are a bit strict here, a bit picky, and we only want these with 0.5, just in this case. You can play around with it all you want to. I also have another one. And that is the price to book. And uh, the price to book is a very common way to see if something is overvalued. And um, I have set this to 1.5, meaning that a bit overvalued is okay. This simply means if the price you're buying it for is more or less than the, than the book value, if you're looking at what, what is the total value of the company. And this book part can be a bit tricky because there are a number of different ways to calculate that. But a price to book means that sometimes these small stocks, if they have gone off a lot, then this price to book is all of a sudden five or 10. So it is the price uh, is showing hype, some hype signals that the price is way higher than the internal value, the intrinsic value of the company. So this is basically it. And sometimes, uh, some days, I only get three matches here. So then I play a bit around with it and, and try to make the, the search terms a bit broader. But you can play around with this just like you want to. But there are tons of different ways to scan. And the way I scan here, there's, as I said, there's nothing magic here. I just want to get some decent uh, candidates that I can have a look at and, and use with my other tools and, and look at the charts and see if there are some candidates we could be interested in. So let's just go with this and try and run through these uh, 18 matches here. And um, if I go like this and I just use my arrow down, then every time I press my arrow down, it gives me a new candidate. So for instance, uh, here, the Magellan Health, what I have here, down here is I have my normal indicators, the CRS indicator where I am comparing the price with the S&P 500. And I would like that to be above these two moving averages, uh, meaning in the green zone, as I used to, to call it. So this one is not in the green zone. It is actually, if you wanted to swing, uh, it has been breaking this uh, area here. So this might actually, Magellan might actually be, be in for a swing up here. Let's see what we have. Oh, that was one of the Danish. Sometimes it jumps over to one of my Danish lists. We just go down here. We can see this Afria here. Um, it has been going up a bit too far uh, for my taste. Uh, I would like to see a retracement and then a tip up again before I took it, but not the worst candidate uh, from a technical point of view. We have some Sykes here and what I'm looking for is I do like it in a green zone. We have Sykes Enterprises here in a green zone. Absolutely. It is trending up nicely. Uh, we, um, we can try to put a regression channel on it here and see, yes, it is nicely within this regression channel. It is diving a bit down here and then it is uh, hovering above its 200 moving, uh, sorry, the 20 day moving average. So this could also be a candidate I should look some further into. Uh, let's see, it keeps jumping to my Danish here. So let's just go down here. All right. Um, we have the Stuarts. 
um, yeah, not really my taste. Sometimes I cannot really tell exactly why it is my taste, but after have been looking at millions of charts, I just get a feeling of what I'm looking for, and I'll try to explain this to you. That is amazing. All right, we'll take the ACC here. That one is looking fairly well. Some people like the price to be above the 200 day moving average here, and we can see the price is, is nicely above here. Maybe a bit uh, of a retracement down to around 35.50, and then a bounce from, from there. We are not entirely in green zone yet on a weekly chart, but that is uh, often okay. What do we have here? We have the China Yu Chai, I think it is pronounced, and that's actually a stock I have in my short term portfolio that I bought down here. Uh, on September 4th, uh, where it bounced off the uh, the 20 uh, SMA here. And as you can see, it is in a green zone on a weekly. So I bought it down here at 1660 or something like that. And it has been going up very nicely lately. So just following the 20 SMA. So that is also a, a very nice candidate here. We have uh, um, M MYR. Uh, I'm not sure what how that how that is pronounced has gone up a bit too far now, but if it retraces back to 20 SMA, that is fair enough. I usually just save these candidates and put it in a watch list so I can once a day or once every second day, I can just scroll through them and see if any of them have been doing some uh, very nice performance on, on the chart. We have the Digi International here, very nice, very uh, steady trend if we look at it here. You can see that it's just doing within this, you can see this blue number here, that is 0.92 and we want that to be above 0.8 or 0.85 because it tells us that this channel is very good at containing all of the data uh, we have down here. So that is a possibility. We have the Sutro Biopharma, uh, also a decent candidate, but I do not like that the retracements are going down way too, uh, way uh, below the 20 SMA. I do like the bounces to be on the 20 SMA before I take it. So as you can hear here, this is not 100% rules based. We have some uh, AR strategies here. That one is looking quite nicely. It is bouncing up from a um, breaking this uh, area here. So that could definitely be a candidate. And remember, if any of these are something you, you think you want to look more into, then do it yourself. This is just for some inspiration as to how I work with this. And some days uh, there's not really coming up any uh, interesting candidates here. One of the candidates I have found, though, is this Hooker Furniture. I hope it is pronounced Hooker. It would be a bomber working for Hooker Furniture. but. Anyway, this one has been going up. It is in a green zone. And uh, as we can see in the regression channel here, let's just remove this because I actually think this is one of the more interesting candidates, maybe one you can uh, take along and, and do some extra research with. They have had their earnings recently. They have paid out dividend here. So we are, we are not really into any of these. It took a retracement just down below the 20 SMA and just down kissing the 50 line here on the, uh, on the 14 uh, days RSI here on, on the daily chart. But it actually shoots quite nicely upwards. And it's one that I am thinking about adding to my shorter term portfolio. But let's just have a look at it on the fundamental side to see if there are any uh, warning signs, anything that tells us that this is a very weak candidate and it is just a pure hype that is going up. As you can see, it took a, um, it broke up. Let's just draw a line here. It broke up above this top on the weekly chart. And then it retraced down to the exact same area where the where the resistance was before. And now it is using that for support and bouncing up from that. So that is a good sign as well. So let's try and have a look into Stockopedia that I like to see. And we can actually see here that we are having a, um, a company that has an earnings quality of 78, a value at 58. That's actually very decent. Many of the candidates I'm finding that have been trending for a while, they are down at a value here uh, in, in the value zone at 10 or 20 or 25 here, but 58 is actually decent. And the momentum uh, 85 and an overall stock rank at 92. Very, very nice. So already here we can see it is not a complete. Uh, it is not a complete wreck to buy into here. 
where you can see that the PE ratio is fairly, uh, the peg ratio, where we take the PE ratio and, de and uh, divide by the estimated uh, earnings from next year, that's only 0.6, and I do like that to be below 2, so that is very nice. Earnings per share growth, uh, 30%, nice. The valuation here, as you can see, price to book value, 1.46, that was the one where we said we wanted it below 1.5, so that is nice here. Uh, price to free cash flow, great. Price to sale, absolutely amazing. It only has a Petrosky score at four, so uh, normally I like that around six, but uh, if everything else checks out, that can be okay. The bankruptcy risk, the Altman C score, is just here going down into cautious, so that is it is a small stock, and we are looking for swing trade, so this is not one that I am normally looking uh, the most at here. When we're looking at the earnings per share normalized, we can see that 2020 had a drop, but it is estimated to go up again in uh, 21 and 22. So that is uh, fair enough. And I actually think that the Q2 earnings of, uh, of this year was, uh, I think that was a, a very good surprise as far as I recall. So as you can see, 21 and 22, uh, the estimates are some very nice growth upwards here. Uh, free cash flow. Uh, is going up. We do like to see that. Uh, we can see they are paying a dividend of around 2%, and they have normally a, a decent dividend cover of bit above 2. Now, the last trailing 12 months, it has been below, but I think that will go up again. I'm not certain if they won't be paying out any dividends here. Sometimes Stockopedia is not showing this correctly. So sometimes the zeros displayed here are actually not right. So we'll have to dig into that if we're going for some dividends. Now we can see that the working capital is actually kind of, that is, is very decent here for a small company, $150 million. We can see that uh, net debt is going down, so that is also very good. The interest coverage is minus 26%, and uh, I would have to dig into that um, to, to see how that is. If they have negative uh, net debt, there, there might be something in that debt structure that is not, um, that is not completely uh, all right there, but I'll have to look into that if I want to be in the stock for a longer time span. Quick ratio, current ratio is great, sales growth, um a bit down oh that is i think that is on a, a quarterly basis yes but as we can see here in the graphics they are estimating growth here we can see there's only one bro broker following them and they are saying uh, that is uh, both three months ago and now it is a very strong buy here so uh, if we want to look more into what they do we can see it is a home furnishing marketing design and logistics company and so on we kind of guess that out of the of the name and the and the picture here if we really want to go in depth to make sure that we are not buying something uh, really crazy we can see that on the fast graph we can see that have been going down and have actually been a value zone here for a while but the earnings have been going down as we can see but now they are estimated to start growing and if this picture uh, is is correct and it has been hovering around the, the, the brown orange line here. If it keeps doing that, we can see that over the next bit more than a year, we can uh, see some estimated earnings, including dividends for uh, around 32% per year. So that gives me, uh, it, it's not certain that I'll hold it more than a year, but it gives me a good idea that it, it has some uh, a lot of upwards potential here. So that's actually fair enough. I can go into Guru Focus and see, well, it is actually a stable company when they are when they're putting these stars on. If they have uh, the more stars they have, the more the they, they think that they can go up over the next year. Financial strength is great. The profitability is OK. They have their own value score here, which is decent. Uh, it, many of these small companies are up here when we get the buy signals. But uh, actually, it's coming from a very low point here. There are some warning signs, some low Petrosky scores, some declining operating margins, something that we should look into if we want to keep it at a longer rate. Something that you know I like to see is what have the insiders been doing over the last year. And there have been one purchase, the one insider buy here of the stocks, but uh, over the last year, actually nothing really. So it's not like the the insiders are pumping it up and then just uh, selling off. So that actually looks fairly stable. If you want to look further into it, 
we can see we can always go into for instance seeking alpha that's one of the places i have a, a subscription on and uh, there are a lot of good articles here we can just get a quick glance and see that hooker furniture record housing leads to 37 percent gain in earnings per share in the second quarter that is from the december 3rd so that is uh, very good here we have some news here steady dividend growth with rising demands that's from july so we can just go in here and there are very many good articles in here at, at seeking alpha so all in all this Hooker furniture here, just from a simple scan, making sure that we have a, a, a good trend. Then uh, I, I used to say that when we're looking at the uh, at the technicals, uh, sorry, when we're looking at the fundamentals, we are see we are looking at if this is a stock I would like to hold, and this is actually a very decent stock, and I would like to hold it. What we see when we look at the charge is if someone else likes to, uh, to like to hold it as well. So if we can see that the price is going up and I have not been buying yet, then someone else must see the same as we do or something else that makes them buy. So in the fundamentals, I'm looking at if I want to buy, uh, have the company, own the company. And here we see if anyone else would like to own the company. And when the price trends up, it seems like a lot of other people want to own the company. So if that matches up with what we see in the fundamentals, that is usually a good fit. And uh, I was just looking back to uh, on many of the candidates I have been t telling you about in, in the last month in the videos, and many of them have actually had some huge uh, increases in price. You can go back and look for yourself. There are also some drops in price, but as you know, I have some very strict exit rules. If it goes down below the 20 SMA, tries to get up and bounces down, I'm just selling it right away within five, seven, eight percent a loss and then I'm just sticking to the ones that goes up and I have had several that have gone up 50 60 70 percent over the last three to four months so these are of course the ones that we make the bulk of our money on so that's all for now it's just a quick glance into how you can use the stock screener for some short-term swing trading profit and what I do to make sure that the overall fundamentals are actually not a complete car wreck all right, that's all for now. Remember to subscribe. I really like this challenge to grow a lot. So if you please would subscribe and like the video and all that down there below, uh, then we can make the YouTube algorithm happy and we can get this challenge to grow at up around 10,000 subscribers, I hope, within New Year or a bit after that. So please help me with that and um, I'll talk to you again soon. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.